Hi everyone, I'm Sam Wajiri, News 12 Long Island's Evening Meteorologist. Thank you for joining me. Okay, weather has been a pretty busy month. We've had a lot of clouds around, showers, and a couple of thunderstorms. And something that I use every day, my fellow meteorologists use every day, is weather instruments to help us to predict the weather. We really rely on the data that those instruments give us. So today I thought we could learn all about the different types of weather instruments. Now this photo here is outside of the National Weather Service in New Jersey, and you can see some of the different instruments there. So weather instruments or meteorological instruments, what do they do? They help us to understand and predict the weather. They measure atmospheric conditions or the conditions in the sky. And what we mean about that is temperature, pressure, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, and precipitation. Is it raining or is it snowing? Depending on what the seasons are. All right, so first up, I think everyone knows what this is. A thermometer. Is it hot or cold outside? Now, when the air outside a thermometer is hot, the liquid inside the thermometer starts to rise. Now, when it's cool, it will start to fall. And if you look on the thermometer, there's a scale and that shows us what the actual temperature is. So most thermometers have the Fahrenheit scale, which is what we use. And there's also the Celsius scale on it. After that, we have the barometer and that measures how much pressure is in the air. When a barometer rises, that means pressure is rising. And then we know we're probably going to see some nice, sunny, dry weather or warm weather. If the barometer is falling, that's when we know that maybe cool and cloudy, unsettled weather is coming along with lower pressure. After that, a sling psychrometer, and I think this could be maybe one of the most fun weather instruments. It measures relative humidity by using evaporation. So there's two thermometers on it attached to a handle. Now you take this handle and you spin the thermometers around for about 20 seconds to get your data. So spin two thermometers through the air, one thermometer is plain, and on the end of the other thermometer, we have a little wet cloth. So we call it a dry bulb thermometer and a wet bulb thermometer. The dry thermometer measures air temperature, the wet one measures dew point because the wet cloth cools as it spins around and that's caused by evaporation. So we get the dew point number from this. And when the dew point is high, let's say in the summer, if we have a dew point near 70, that's when it feels sticky and uncomfortable, but if we have a low dew point, especially in the 40s and 50s, we've got some nice, pleasant weather around and we hope to see more of that this spring. All right, simply here, a hygrometer, that measures the amount of water vapor or humidity in the air. And um, it's a slow moving tool. It can take up to about two hours sometimes to get an accurate reading, but still we definitely use it. And it's kind of fun to have even at your own home. An anemometer measures how fast the wind is blowing. On top of the anemometer, we have these cups and these cups catch the wind. And then that turns the dial on it to give us our wind speed. And we can also sometimes see the direction if there's a vein attached to it. So the faster that these cups are spinning, the stronger the wind, the slower the cups are spinning, the weaker the wind. And that brings us into a weather vane. Do you have one on your house? I do, especially in my parents' house. That helps to tell us the wind direction. It's just definitely something fun to have, whether the wind's blowing out of the north, south, east, or west. The wind spins the arrow to point in the direction that the wind is blowing. So right here, you can see it looks like there's a southwesterly wind with the rooster on top. Definitely kind of fun. All right, a rain gauge. And when we're done today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your own rain gauge. That measures how much rain has fallen over a specific amount of time. When it's raining, the rain gets collected in the gauge here and there's marking on the gauge. So that will tell us how many inches of rain has fallen and a snow gauge would be very similar to that. All right, and my absolute favorite, a weather balloon. And this is a picture of me holding a weather balloon. I got to go to the National Weather Service in Brookhaven and launch a weather balloon. It was so exciting. The balloon was heavy and when I let go of it, I actually do have a video of this. It shot up into the air so quickly that it kind of caught me off guard, but it was definitely fun. So what's a weather balloon? Well, that records weather data high up in the sky above the ground. Attached to it is a radio sonde, and I'm holding that right there. That records temperature, relative humidity, wind, and pressure. And then the radio sonde takes that data and transmits it back to the National Weather Service. Now, some fun facts about the weather balloon. It could fly for up to two hours, rising over 100,000 feet high, which would be 20 miles high in the sky. 
definitely some interesting stuff. All right, now we'll head downstairs and I'll show you how to make your rain gauge. Okay, so in order to make your own rain gauge, it's pretty simple and you only need a couple of items that you probably already have at home. First up is a clear water bottle or a soda bottle. You need a Sharpie marker so that when you write on the bottle, it won't run off in the rain when it's outside. A couple of rocks from your backyard, a ruler or a tape measure, and some scissors. So all I did here was take my bottle and I cut the top off. And then if you can see here, I actually took the top and put it inside the bottle. So I just flipped it over. Now you can add some tape around the rim if it feels like it's loose, but mine's pretty tight so I didn't need to do so. I filled up the bottom with rocks and then on top of the rocks here, I took my ruler and just matched up the ruler with the marker so I have inches and a scale going up the side. Now all I have to do is put this outside tomorrow when it rains and we'll see how much rain I get in my backyard. You could put yours out in your backyard and let me know how much rain you get as well. All right, guys, I hope everyone had fun. And if you plan to make a rain gauge, why not stick it outside? The next few days, we have some rain coming around. And you can find me on social media. Send me the pictures of you making your rain gauge or how much rain you actually get in your backyard. You can find me at Samantha Ogiri, and you can see all of my videos on news12.com. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send them my way. I'll catch up with you guys later.